Hey guys, James Gam for TFB TV. A lot of you have been asking for a review of the Ruger American. I've read your comments and I acquired one from Ruger for testing today. Ruger American, the Ruger American. It's kind of weird, it falls out of line with Ruger's typical branding. I'm just gonna call it the Ruger American from henceforth, but you get nine millimeter, 17 plus one, it's got a Picatinny rail, very easy takedown, virtually identical to the SIG 2.2 series. All you do is lock it all the way to the rear, remove your magazine, tilt the takedown lever 90 degrees, and then remove the slide and all the guts come out. Two features that I really like about the Ruger American are the cross hatching on the rear slide serrations, which is kind of cool, and the Novak sights. It's got front and rear Novak low profile three dot sights, which are some of my favorite, especially if you're gonna be concealed carrying this gun. Ambi safety, which is one feature that more manufacturers are starting to integrate. Pretty good looking gun with the all black. It doesn't have as much shit on it as the SR9, like loaded chamber indicator, mag safety. This one will fire, it doesn't have a mag safety, thank God. The gun's a good looking gun, even though it still has quite a bit of legal ease on it. Gun will fire with magazine removed. Read instruction manual before using firearm. Freaking lawyers, man. No manual safety, at least on this version, which I'm fine with and I think most people are. It comes with three interchangeable back straps and I call them back straps, but they're really more like grip panels because it is the left and right side of the grip, not just the back strap, but the left and right hand side of the grip. Let's pour some Merc on this son of a bitch. Let's go shoot this thing. I've got an SR9 in the truck too that I'll bring out and maybe do a little comparison while I'm shooting them. To discuss the specs real quick, the Ruger American has an overall length of seven and a half inches, height of 5.6 inches, and it weighs 30 ounces. To compare that to the Glock 17, which also has a 17 plus one capacity, the Glock is 8 inches long, 5.4 inches tall, and it has a barrel length of 4.5 inches, while the Ruger at 4.2 inches only gives up 3 tenths of an inch of barrel. For me, one of the most important features of the Ruger American compared to its other centerfire pistols is the inclusion of a stainless steel slide that is black nitride coated and seems to be very durable. Ruger claims that the trigger is a little bit less than six and a half pounds, that it is plus P rated. It uses genuine Novak low mount carry three dot sights. It also has an ambi slide stop and mag release. It includes two nickel Teflon plated steel 17 round magazines, small, medium and large grip modules and a hard plastic case. All right, this is my first time shooting the Ruger Merkin. Let's see how it does. I mean, you would almost think that they got this trigger straight out of a Glock. You know, I, I think that they, it, it seems like this has the exact same trigger as a Glock. You got, you have that take up and then, in fact, I think maybe this one's a little bit, a little less squishier than the Glock at the end because you have that initial no resistance take up and then you got your trigger pull, you know, six pounds, six and a half pounds probably at the end. So the trigger's almost identical to the Glock. If you like a Glock trigger, you're gonna like this. If you like the way a SIG 2.2 series takes down with the little takedown lever, you swing 90 degrees. Uh, that, that, in my mind, is the best method of takedown. Uh, that's, you've got that here too. So they've blended, you can tell Ruger's kind of blended some of the more popular features from other guns. It's got the Novak style sights, just like what comes on the M&P series. But here's one thing that I, I don't like. Um, the recoil seems a little bit heavier for a nine millimeter than my other full size service pistols. And I, I'm gonna shoot another mag through it, but, but I think that's the case. 
And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to grab the SR9, which I consider to be a relatively light recoiling pistol. And, uh, and I'll compare the two and see if there's, there's any difference or if I'm just out of my mind. All right, now that I'm shooting a few more rounds through it, I'm getting a little bit more into the swing of it. And, uh, and I like it, you know? Um, it's, it's a good looking gun. It's a nice little blend of organic and geometric. I guess kind of like if a stealth bomber had sex with a Ducati or something like that. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I feel like it is, there's a little bit more recoil than there ought to be. And, that might have something to do with this recoil spring because it, I, I, this is too easy for me right now to rack that slide all the way back. You know, maybe that'll make this gun a little bit more reliable, but I bet if you put an extra few pounds of recoil spring pressure in here, it'd probably reduce your recoil, but you'd still have just as reliable a gun. What the fuck? I mean, it's shooting. It's shooting pretty damn well. So, as luck would have it, I have a Ruger SR9. The poor, forgotten, downtrodden Ruger SR9. Right now, there are people at Ruger going, Ruger SR9, what's that? The only thing I know about is the American. There are some things I don't like about the SR9. For one, your choice and finish is shitty bluing that's going to rust or stainless steel that is also going to rust. Another thing I don't like, this one's got a loaded chamber indicator, it's got the magazine safety, it's got a thumb safety, it's got all these safeties that I don't want that are not on the American, uh, the, the Merkin, the takedown. It's, you gotta align the takedown lines and holes and then push this pin through and all that and then do it again when you have to put it back together. Uh, the Merkin, is a lot easier, as I've said. Now, there are things that I do like about the SR9, and these are things that I feel like the Merkin kind of lacks. One, I like the changeable back straps on, on the Ruger. I mean, it's, it's, you push this pin out, and it's one or the other. It's just this little piece of rubber in the back. Uh, with the Merkin, you're changing out like the entire grip, and it takes a tool. That's not a big gripe. But another thing I really like about the SR9 is I've always considered this to be a light recoiling gun. And I, I think it's because it's, you can get a good high grip on this tang. I mean, you are a tenth of an inch from the slide with your dominant hand. And getting that high up on the gun really reduces felt recoil. I thought they nailed that with this gun. Last and most importantly, the SR9 lacks a really cool last name like the motherfucking American. Anyways, like I said, just straight shooting experience. I think that the SR9 is one of the best guns out there. Great ergos, great recoil mitigation. So let's do a little face off. I know it's loaded because there's this big fucking loaded chamber indicator telling me so. You guys can probably see it from over there, huh? I just don't even know what to say. Uh, the, really, the SR9 is one of the lightest recoiling guns out there. Uh, I mean, this thing just flies. I'll, I'll load up another mag. Okay, rapid fire, SR9 versus Merkin. All right, so I think my inclination was correct. I, I think that you get a little bit more recoil with the American versus a uh, gun like the SR9, maybe even the Glock. But I mean, this is still a, a sweet shooting gun. So I guess I wanna say in conclusion that I wanna welcome Ruger to the full-size tactical pistol market. The SR9 was pretty close, but like I said earlier, there were, there were some deficiencies with the SR9. It wasn't 
I, I wouldn't say a, a serious tactical pistol. It really the main problem was the finish wasn't very good. There were a lot of parts, there were a lot of safeties, and the SR9 just didn't feel like a full-size tactical pistol. The Murican does. I'll stop calling it the Murican um, because it, it really has impressed me. The American does feel like a full-size tactical pistol. So let's start from the top. You've got Novak sights, stainless barrel. You have finally a durable finish from Ruger. Interchangeable back straps. I don't like the fact that you need an Allen key to change these back straps, but that's a small gripe. They've basically copied the Glock trigger. I mean, if you're used to a Glock trigger, then this is your gun. They've taken the takedown lever from the SIG 220 series. They've integrated a four notch Picatinny rail dust cover for the first time. 17 plus one. Ergonomics are good. I do like the Ambi mag release, even if it is a little bit on the small side. It also has an Ambi slide release. So you have more or less a fully Ambi gun here. I mean, really, if you remove the branding from this gun and you just looked at it and got to handle it briefly, it, it, it you wouldn't really know. You wouldn't expect this from Ruger. It, it seems more like something from the uh, post-German SIG. It seems like something from like a newer gun from HK. Congrats to Ruger for doing something different here. And depending on the price point, this could give the other full-size tactical polymer pistols in the market a run for their money. So what I would say, is this the best gun ever? No, it's not. I mean, it's a good gun. This is a, a pretty strong entry into the double stack full-size market. And all I'm saying is if you're in the market for that, depending on the price point that these Americans are gonna be sold at, I don't know at the time of filming, this could be a pretty good option. Anyways, I wanna say thanks guys for watching my reviews. Uh, thank you to the subscribers. Thank you to Ventura Munitions, our sponsor. And I will see you next week.